welcome to Community Matters. My name is Reg Baker and I am the guest host today. We're, we've got a guest today that a lot of people already know about, but he's decided to run for office. Uh, he is a candidate for the OHA trustee at large, Kli Akina, and he's here today to tell us a little bit about OHA and why he's running for office. Good morning. Well, good morning, Reg. Delighted to be on your program. Thanks for having me on board today. Great to have you here. Now, now you and I have known each other for right. quite a while, <laughs> and we've, we've done different projects together. We've worked on different things. But, you know, Klee, I don't really know that much about, you know, your background, and, and I've always been a little embarrassed to ask, but can you can, fill us in? Where, where are you well, from? Well, I come from a local family that uh, really is a blend of the Chinese and the Hawaiian from the 19th century. Uh, a Chinese boy came over and did a very smart thing when he worked on the plantations. He married a Hawaiian lady. <laughs> and we, we have been a Chinese-Hawaiian family ever since. And uh, basically, I started my career out in Christian ministry, moved to the uh, academic world, was a professor for a while. And now I, I head a public policy group called the Grassroot, Grassroot Institute. Right. And that's a very active group. I, I've seen a lot of the, the work that you've done. In a lot of ways, we're watchdogs. What we try to do is make sure that our government and our economy are operating on fair and good principles. Very good. And I guess uh, you know some do and some don't. And it's that's nice right. to have that watchdog out there. And it's good to work together in your field as an accountant. You've lent a lot of good analysis to our work, and I appreciate that. Oh, my pleasure. Now, you know, in addition to grassroots, which I'm sure keeps you pretty busy. Yes, it does. Um, you've decided to run for office. That's right. And, and you know, OHA. Everybody's heard of OHA. I think, you know, it, it's a pretty common that's entity right. that's out there. But I don't think as many people totally understand exactly what OHA is and, and what it's responsible for and who it's accountable for. That's so can you explain a little bit to absolutely, us? Absolutely, Reg. Reg, OHA means the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, and, and it's a state government agency whose leaders are elected just like state legislators, representatives, and senators, and it manages resources that the state of Hawaii has put aside to better the native Hawaiian people. And, and that historically came because Hawaii used to be a kingdom with a citizenry. And uh, in that transition to the United States, the federal government and the state said, we're going to take care of some of the needs of the descendants of the citizens. And so the Office of Hawaiian Affairs is responsible for administering that. And what that really means is to prov provide help with housing, jobs, education, and health care for the native Hawaiians. Wow, that's a lot. It really is, because the, the native Hawaiians uh, make up a very significant part of the population. And, uh, for example, uh, in areas in which there is need, such as homelessness, native mm -hmm, Hawaiians mm -hmm. are a very high percentage. So one of the benefits of having the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to everyone is that there's this source of resources to take care of those needs that doesn't then have to come out of the legislature or the tax dollars. Right, because it's already been set aside for that purpose. That's right. Right. And one of the reasons I'm running is to make sure that it's used for that purpose of meeting the real needs that are there for housing and jobs and education and health care. Well, and do you, can you share with us a little bit about what OHA does in some of these different areas? For example, in the education area, in the housing, and, and in the health care. I mean, how active are they, and, and how many people have they helped in these areas? Well, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs certainly has grant programs and uses those grants to help other organizations meet needs for housing, jobs, education, health care, and so forth. And, but that's only part of what the Office of Hawaiian mm. Affairs does. The most important thing is that the Office of Hawaiian Affairs protects a Hawaiian trust fund. And that comes from the revenues from what we call the ceded lands, mm -hmm. as, as well as other sources. And their job is to protect that fund, grow that fund, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. use that fund for proper purposes. And you know, Reg, you're an accountant, and you look at all of that. Uh, uh, we've looked very carefully at that, and we found that they're not very good at protecting that fund, mm -hmm. that they're not good at all at growing that f fund, and the f monies from that trust fund are not being effectively used to meet the needs of Hawaiians. And, and that's something I'd like to change. Yeah, well, of course. I think that's um, kind of disappointing that, that, that they've not been able to make any progress uh, to, you know, build this fund and make it, you know, utilize what the That's right. You know, the, the, the data shows some things that are, should be of concern to all citizens in the state, Native Hawaiians and others, and one of them is the last state audit showed that the monies that should going to programs to help the, the needs of Hawaiians are far too few compared to the actual 
both of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Mm -hmm. The other concern has to do with an audit that, that has shown that uh, in its $43 million per year budget, spending down its $400 million trust fund. And it's predicted, according to this private audit, that in eight to nine years, with the kind of spending, if it doesn't change, that the trustees allow, the entire trust fund will be spent. And, and, and you know, that, that should be alarming to everyone because the consequence of that would be dire. As you know, I'm a CPA yes, and I've had are. a lot of different clients. That's and, right. And I have been involved in, in clients that had large amounts of money. And so I can say with some experience, to spend down $400 million in 8 to 10 years isn't easy. That takes some effort. It really does. You know, and it's, it's surprising that they can't really get some traction and start showing some results from, from what they're That's trying right. to do. One of the things on which they're spending money is something the Native Hawaiian people have made it clear they absolutely want. And that happens to be the pursuit of what is called federal recognition of the Native Hawaiians as an mm -hmm. Indian tribe. Ever since 1978, surveys have been taken by the Office of Hawaiian Affairs from 1978 through 2015, commissioned by the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, in which they have shown that the Native Hawaiian people have said the least of their interests and priorities, mm -hmm. and their, their desire is to see money is spent in, on housing and jobs and education and health care. But during the last 20 years, OHA has spent nearly 50 million dollars on the pursuit of this federal recognition. Reg, that money could have been used for the real needs of Hawaiians. Oh my gosh, think of all the housing and, and all of the health care and all Absolutely. the education that that could have provided. Absolutely. One of the things that is really not only a, a tragedy but a scandal is that while OHA has been spending this kind of money, and there are other ways they're spending, if we had a longer show, <laughs> we could go into that, but while OHA has been spending this money in a way that is not in accord with its mission and not advancing the Native Hawaiian people, Hawaiians have gone without their needs met. For example, there are 27,000 Native Hawaiians on the Hawaiian Homes waiting list. Since the inception of that list, 30,000 people have died while on the waiting oh, list. It's tragic. Uh, and, and the scandal is that the land is there. The Hawaiian homelands constitute the third largest land estate here in the state of Hawaii. There's more than enough land to fulfill the needs of those on the waiting list. But the problem is financing the infrastructure. OHA has had that money. But here's what was said at a panel discussion of candidates. A, a trustee who has been a, a veteran trustee said that the Department of Hawaiian Homelands is not their kuleana or not their department, not their affair, because it's a separate government agency. You've got the Office of Hawaiian Affairs mm -hmm. and you've got the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. But, you know, my point is this. OHA should at least care about that issue. Mm -hmm. OHA, from a moral point of view and the constitutional mandate it has to advance the betterment of the Hawaiian people, needs to work outside of departmental lines and needs Absolutely. to, to well, use and its influence to solve that problem. And at the very least, try and collaborate a little bit to work together to, because the end objective is the same for both groups, is Absolutely. to help the Hawaiian community. Absolutely. You know, I, who, and, and I don't want to get too much into pointing fingers, but does OHA have an oversight? I mean, does any, well, who that's, are they accountable for? That's too? a very interesting question. The accountability of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs is directly to the voting public. The voters go to the polls. When you go to the primary election and you go to the general election, you vote for state legislators, you vote for a governor, you vote for congressmen. You also vote for OHA trustees. Mm -hmm. So that's the level of accountability. But there's been a problem with that, Reg. 60% of all the voters leave that OHA ballot blank. My gosh, why, why would they leave it blank? Well, I, I think one of the reasons is that uh, Native Hawaiians themselves, we are the lowest of voters mm -hmm. who show up and actually vote. So Native Hawaiians aren't involved very much. There's a great deal of apathy, sad to say. Wow. But in addition to that, those who are not Native Hawaiians may not be fully aware how important a responsibility it is by law to be voting in the OHA election because OHA administers assets that the state owns. These belong to all the people of Hawaii. And OHA, if we don't hold them accountable, can 
actually interfere with almost every decision. You know, there's an interesting uh, clause in the state constitution that says OHA, in pursuit of its mission, can intervene virtually every state agency in the state. It's very powerful. Ultimately, people have seen that the Office of Hawaiian Affairs has the capacity to weigh in on every decision in the state involving land, air, sea, and people. Now, it doesn't mean that it always weighs in positively. Mm -hmm. It can also mm -hmm. obstruct what is going on for the greater good. And I would say that's one reason that people should get involved in voting for OHA. The second reason is I believe everyone, Native Hawaiian or not, cares about the Native Hawaiians. And we want them to have the jobs, the economic opportunity, the education that they need. OHA is a great source and it should be spending its money to meet the needs of Hawaiians. Well, and no hypothetically, should know what those needs are better than OHA. I mean, they're involved in this every day. They should be aware of what needs to be done. Well, absolutely. Reg, there's some culpability here. I'm sorry to say it, but you're right. No one knows those needs greater than OHA, and there's a very simple reason. OHA has spent huge amounts of money on one of the finest research departments of any agency mm. in the state. They produce a thick data report every year on the condition of the Native Hawaiians. Usually, they use this to go to the legislature to say the Hawaiians are so bad off we need more money so here's the documentation but that research that they do themselves as well as contract out to other research organizations mm -hmm. has shown them very clearly what the needs and the wants of the native hawaiians are and they have not been fulfilling those and that's the roadmap I mean, that is exactly what they need to be acting on. That, that's their list of action points. Well, it's ironic. These surveys show that the Native Hawaiians are saying, stop spending on political campaigns, stop sending, spending on federal recognition, and instead spend on jobs, education, housing, and health care. And that's the mission of OHA. So what we need are trustees who are going to say, we're going to fulfill the government's stated mission of OHA, and we're going to also fulfill the will of the people. They need to keep the eye on the ball. But, you know, I can't help but think that they're spending the money in going off in areas that are not priority for the Hawaiian community. But think of the time and energy that's also committed to it, that if that became available to focus on more important issues, think of the traction and the momentum they can build. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, Reg, there's another way in which the monies are being dwindled away. Not only are they spending, the trustees spending on things whose priorities are within the mission, but they're also spending on business ventures that have failed and losing hundreds of millions of dollars in the process of that. I don't know where you are in terms of your break, but I'd love to tell you a, a story about that. Well, coincidentally, we need to go on a break for just a minute. <laughs> we can go into that right after the break. But this is uh, Reg Baker. I'm hosting Community Matters uh, today. We've got Kalihi Akina, who's a candidate for OHA trustee at large. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Hi, my name is Aaron Wills. You are watching thinktechhawaii.com. I am the host of the show Rehabilitation Coming Soon. You can watch us live at thinktechhawaii.com at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. I will see you there. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi with the Think Tech Hawaii show, Stacy to the Rescue, highlighting some of Hawaii's issues. You can catch it at Think Tech Hawaii on Mondays at 11 a.m. Aloha. See you then. Welcome back to Community Matters. I'm here today talking with Kali, who is a candidate for OHA trustee at large. Uh, and we were just getting into some of the different ventures that OHA has gotten into. And Kali, I, I was sorry to interrupt, but can you expand a little bit on that? Absolutely, Reg. As, as we were talking about before, OHA has this potential to do so much good for the Hawaiian people and all people, but they've been spending away the trust fund. Mm -hmm. 
they've been spending it on political pursuits and so forth. But one of the other ways that trust is being dwindled is by bad business decisions. Uh, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs has been attempting to raise revenues. And one of the ways in which they did this has to deal with the Kaka'ako development. Mm. The state of Hawaii owed the Office of Hawaiian Affairs $800 million in back payments from the ceded lands. Wow. But the Office of Hawaiian Affairs trustees didn't press to get that full amount of money. Instead, they accepted a piece of property that was valued somewhere between 100 and $200 million if it could be fully developed. So right at the start, they accepted this piece of property at a $600 million loss to the estate. Well, that's a huge discount. It is, and the problem is nobody's watching. Nobody's holding them accountable to any standards for the protection of their trust. But then the second thing is the way they manage this deal. Uh, this, this property is at Kaka'ako Waterfront Park. If those of you who know Oahu know where the Ward Center is, or the Ward Warehouse is over there, a street from Ala Moana Boulevard, we have the old Fisherman's Wharf. Right, yes. You follow Fisherman's Wharf along the coastline all the way to the Kaka'ako Waterfront Park or the John Burns Medical School. Mm -hmm. That land, that 31 acres, belongs now to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Now, if you take a look at that land, they've had that for three years, and it's just sitting there. Mm -hmm. And the only thing going on there is once in a while they open it up for trucks to do a food court, and, and the, uh, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, sad to say, is kicking off Native Hawaiians who are homeless on that property. The reason it's sitting there is because when the Office of Hawaiian Affairs got that, it was illegal to build high-rise towers on that, and that's the only way they were going to get their money. They went into this deal thinking they could change the law. So they went to the state legislature and they said, you can't do it. Here's what they wanted to do. They wanted to build 400-foot towers mm. in a region that was zoned for only 200 foot. They wanted to have high-rise towers that were twice the height. That was against the law, and they couldn't get the law changed. And they wanted to build these towers on the ocean side of the Ala Moana Boulevard which would block our view to Honolulu. Mm -hmm. the, and that also got turned down. So now, OHA is stuck with this land. It's a financial failure, and they can't develop on it. And, and just that is making a bad decision is that they did it and lost $600 million at the same time. Think of the opportunity that that would have presented to have that extra money. Absolutely. Not only is this a loss to the Native Hawaiian people, but failure to meet the needs of the Native Hawaiians with these resources means that the cost of taking care of the homeless and others falls on the state taxpayer. In addition to that, th this shows why we need greater transparency, greater accountability that you asked me earlier, Reg, who holds them accountable? And I mentioned the most important is the voters. Voters need to put qualified trustees into office rather than the same trustees year after year. And that's why I'm offering myself and I also promote the candidacy of another trustee. But in addition to that, we have to, as citizens, recognize this is a state agency and it has to be held right. accountable. Now, I just want to clarify one point. Yes. Um, when you go into the voting booth. That's right. All people have the opportunity to vote for the trustees. It's not just Hawaiians. I mean, it's the entire population that goes to vote. They have some influence. That's that right. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, for those of you watching who are voters in Hawaii, the trustees of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs are your representatives. They are managing assets and resources that belong to the people of Hawaii. They are fulfilling a mission as state agents. They are paid as salaried employees of the state of Hawaii. And so every election, when you go into the voting booth and you see legislators, representatives, senators, governor and so forth, you'll also see Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Everybody votes because this is state assets being administered by state administrators. And if you don't vote, if you skip over that, you're really hurting what the OHA can do for the community on a statewide basis. You know, uh, a lot of people who are not Native Hawaiians show their tremendous respect by saying, you know, I don't want to interfere, but I, I'd like to clear up a, a, a myth. The Office of Hawaiian Affairs it isn't the Hawaiian leadership. It's not the elite, it's not the monarchy, it's not the kingdom mm -hmm. and so forth. It's a service bureau mm -hmm. to meet the needs of the population. And we as citizens need to make sure that it's doing a, a, its job. But more than that, 
all of the candidates who are in the general election this year have publicly gone on record and invited and urged non-Hawaiians to vote because we recognize that we need good people who care about citizenship involved in the selection of trustees. So it's not an offense to Hawaiians at all. In fact, Native Hawaiian leaders are calling upon everyone, both Hawaiians and non-Hawaiians, to get involved in this most important of elections. It's so very crucial to the well-being of the entire state and it affects everyone. Well, and that's a, a good point, is that, you know, the old saying goes that a rising tide lifts all boats. Oh, absolutely. You know, and if we can do whatever we can to help the Hawaiian community get back on its feet and be productive and get educated and have businesses and, and get the proper health care, I mean, that's just going to make things better absolutely. for everybody. In, in fact, Reg, that's a wonderful metaphor, that uh, by raising the water level of all boats, we raise the water level of any individual boat. boat. Right. And, and this is true. Take an area where there's an extremely dense population of Native Hawaiians, the Vianai Nanakuli Coast. Mm where there is really underdevelopment, a great deal of poverty, a lack of industry, and so forth. And if, nobody's paying attention to right. what's going on out there. Somebody needs that's to pick right. up that ball. If the Office of Hawaiian Affairs were simply to carry out its mission and bring about the meeting of human needs and economic revitalization, it not only would help all Native Hawaiians on the coast, it would revitalize the coast so that everyone there, Caucasians, Japanese, Chinese, Filipino, everybody there would be part of a growing economy and a growing social network, a place where needs were being met. So the exciting news is this. While on one hand I'm calling for reform of OHA, for fiscal responsibility, and so I have some critical things to say, on the other hand, I'm saying there's great promise here. If we all get involved and vote for good OHA trustees, we can reverse their spending trends and help not only Native Hawaiians, but end up helping the entire state of Hawaii to flourish. Yeah, it's, it's a very simple concept to grasp. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, as you know, I've got a little bit of a healthcare background, and the uh, Y9 Anakuli area has always been an underserved area when right. it comes to healthcare. I can't think except maybe on the big island over on the Hilo side. I can't think of a better place to put a clinic, and it doesn't cost that much to set up a clinic and find the physicians that would be willing to donate time to go out there and serve that community. And th that would be a nominal cost and a perfect uh, project for maybe OHA to take a look at. You know, if the public puts into office trustees who hold OHA to its mission, not only will Hawaiians benefit, but everyone will benefit from the yes. things that will take place. No, that's... So, if you get elected and you're on the board, what are you going to do? How are you going to fix all this? Well, you know, I'm not going to do it myself. This is a tremendous opportunity, this election, because two years ago, a law went into place that put OHA into the primary elections. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, there would be dozens sometimes of candidates showing up and on the general election list. Did, I think some of you folks out there realize, remember, when you go to the polls and you see a long list of Hawaiian names and you have to scan down there and say, I think he's my cousin or something, and so people just left it blank. But this year they're going to find something very different because of the primary law. They're going to find only two elections for the OHA trustee at large, which is statewide, that I'm running for, and for another island, the Big Island trustee. But the thing is, everybody can vote for the Big Island trustee. It's just that that candidate has to come from the Big Island. So you'll only find two Office of Hawaiian Affairs elections, and you'll only find two candidates for each. And I believe it's very easy to tell the difference between the two. Uh, there are two candidates that are in office now that have been there, one of them for two decades. Mm -hmm. It's a question of whether people want to put back into office the incumbents who've been there a long time, responsible for the policies that I've said, or they want fresh leadership. Uh, and it's, you know, from what I'm hearing, it's either status quo or let's make some positive change. That's right. And we can. It's a great opportunity. So before answering your question about what I'm going to do, I'd like to answer another question, if you don't sure. mind. How in the world are you going to be able to do anything? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so there are nine trustees. That's right. And so it's it, not going to be eight against one. That's you're, right. You're not going to get very much done. Yeah, if it but. were eight against one, uh, I'd be like our friend, Senator Sam Sloan, <laughs> the, the lone Republican in a fully Democrat uh, Senate. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to be the case. Uh, there are nine trustees, and it takes five to make decisions. Mm -hmm. Five constitutes a majority. Right now, of those trustees, 
the incumbents are part of that five majority. If those two incumbents lost, Haunani Apoliona and the chairman Bob Lindsay, if they lost, it would open up two seats in the majority. And if we were to get, well, actually, it would al allow for a new majority because there are some minority candidates, I mean, minority trustees who don't agree with the majority. So there are at least three minority trustees. Mm. If we get two more in there replacing the old uh, majority, we could majority. It shifts. That's yeah. right. There are now two candidates we, we available. We've got about a minute, minute All right. and a half left, so we got to... Those two candidates available that could change the majority are Kili'i Akina and Mili Lani Trask. Mm -hmm. Mili Lani Trask and I both absolutely agree it's time to clean up the fraud, waste, and abuse. And in answer to your question, Reg, what I do is, number one, call for a complete audit of the fiscal activity of OHA. And number two, I would, with the majority, stop the spending on the federal recognition political campaign and use it instead to meet job, housing, education, and health care needs. Thank you. Very good. Well, Klee, it was a pleasure to, to chat with you today. Hopefully we can make some changes. The sooner the better. Well, thank you, and thank you, viewers, and look forward to your votes in the Ohio election. And this is Reg Baker. I was the guest host today on Community Matters. I hope this was informative to you. I know it was to me. Aloha until next time.